My name is D Smith. This is the QA Weekly. If you ever have any questions, comments, suggestions, topics, email me at ask at tqaweekly.com. Go to my website, tqaweekly.com, specifically tqaweekly.com slash se6 ep28 to read all about today's topic, interact with others as well as on previous episodes, and go to the subscribe page to find other ways of subscribing to my uh, to my show, as well as going to the contact page, email me directly, and if you're already on YouTube, of course you already know this. The comments box is down below, and if you want to make this show better, go to patreon.com slash tqaweekly. You can read up on it, listen to the videos I posted on it, and of course get this show 24 to 48 hours in advance of everyone else. Today's topic is submitted by CardFan to hyphen YouTube to be our contributor to the show thank you he also contributed to next week's topic but this week we're talking about false positives versus false negatives and i want to make sure that you are no longer lulled into a false sense of security when you scan your computer with any virus any spyware and anti-malware software by explaining what the difference between false positive versus the false negative is for those who want a very basic definition think of it this way as a pregnancy test a false positive is when you think you're pregnant and you're not, and a false negative is when you think you're not pregnant and you are. That is the most simple way of explaining it. But now back to technology. When you are scanning your computers and your devices to make sure they are void of viruses and spyware, normal users tend to believe that antiviruses and anti-spyware can detect everything made by malicious hackers. In my sources, I have one link. I want you to go there. It's AV Comparatives. It's the tool that I use to explain to people which antivirus software was better than others to help them make a better purchasing decision. I would also indicate that it changes every three months and it can change in one day. In 2013, there was 82,000 new viral malware threats unleashed onto the internet per day day. If that sounds like a lot, by April 2015, it was over a million new malicious threats put out per day. There is no way in all of the planet to prevent every single virus on the internet, and it is extremely hard to get our hands on all of them to analyze them to begin with. The manpower alone would be so tremendous that many antivirus databases containing known viruses often are actually based on what the people are getting in their computers. So let's talk a little bit about that software. Antiviral software uses heuristic scanners and heuristics is actually a form of artificial intelligence that uses mathematical optimization in order to solve problems. Applied to an antivirus, anti-malware, and spyware database though, it allows for a signature database to be used to determine new variants of known strains as well as using known behavioral techniques of these kinds of applications to detect their presence in an operating system. This is where false positives and false negatives become an actual problem. Not from the known viruses, because those are fairly easy to spot. It's a one-to-one -one match in those databases. But from new variants that are either similar to past ones or have never been seen before. And programmers are not necessarily stupid. I'm also a programmer, and we tend to actually look at many different things when we're trying to code. There are a lot of people that want to make money off your back in the most malicious way possible, and I'm going to explain to you a few different techniques you can use against them that should be immune to most of their different techniques. So when we scan our computers, we tend to presume they're clean when they say they are clean because of this heuristic scanner. Keeping in mind that programmers of viruses aren't stupid, they will program around the heuristics so that they do not become detected. It periodically happens. Various files, like in my case, game files, have been actually detected and flagged as viruses. Antivirus software, any malware, and any spyware, not quite that stupid. You can actually tell them it's not a virus. We'll send sample code and we'll fix the database. So you can actually deal with the false positives far more easily than the false negative. The false negatives are really hard to deal with because they actually are dangerous. You're lulled into this false sense of security because your computer is supposedly clean. And until many people start getting these weird problems, 
the antivirus might not detect them. So you might have to actually mitigate the dangers by using more than one antivirus temporarily, don't do it permanently, to supplement for the weaknesses of your current antiviral solution to make sure that your computer is in fact cleaner than it, you think it is, especially if your antivirus is less than desirable at the moment. Keep in mind that changes every single day. So, you know, just to make sure the computer is actually clean. But you also need to compensate for the shortcomings of antiviruses knowing that we have millions of viruses emitted every single week by just being extremely paranoid. It may be that being paranoid will help you out the most. So here's the thing. The absolute worst viruses on the internet, typically crypto ransomware, will encrypt files or portions of your hard drives, will automatically connect to network drives and other drives that are not necessarily addressed in your system and encrypt or delete the backups from those places, forcing you to pay for your the recovery of your documents, normally targeting businesses, but can hit anybody at any time. What you need to keep in mind is they cannot connect to physically disconnected drives. So portable hard drives. If you have a NAS drive and you do like me where you keep it powered off almost all the time, they can't actually connect to something completely powered off, especially if it's a physical switch. And of course, it can't contaminate, contaminate an optical drive that has been burned already unless it's already present on that actual disk. So keep in mind that you will have to actually make a conscious effort to back up in a way that keeps those kinds of viruses from ever infecting or even deleting your backups. Because whether your antivirus says you are clean or not, it does not mean that you are actually in fact clean. Don't open attachments. Don't go into strange websites. If you're scared about it, use Adblock, but only use Adblock on places that you do not trust. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the show. Like, dislike, and leave a comment down below if you had any bad experiences whatsoever. And if you want to see me playing Batman, I have about 14 hours of gameplay that I have done this week. I'm going to be uploading soon the next seven hours that I streamed onto Twitch. There will be a card somewhere on this video. Otherwise, go to tqaweekly.com and watch the video there if you downloaded it so you can actually see the card. So have a great day.